All right, we got Nate Olson with us. Has he seen Ghostbusters? Nate, have you seen Ghostbusters yet? The new one? I no, not really. Once that, look, that looks great. I I just thought Clifford the Big Red Dog the other day with my son. That's a, that's one of my favorites as a kid. That was a good movie. I mean, if you have kids, maybe even if you don't, you should go see it. It's good, uh, good feel, good flick. But yeah, we we saw Ghostbusters the preview for that when we were at Clifford the Big Red Dog. That's definitely on. The Olsen list. Big fan of Ghostbusters around. Yeah, I'm sure you and your son argued about that quite a bit. Drew, Maddie, Nate and his and his son have the most um, interesting sports relationship because... Oh, I saw I the guess, picture on the Yeah, on I the think Twitter the Razorbacks machine. are like the only team they root for together. So yeah. they, they, you, had the, you had the Cowboys-Chiefs thing going on Monday. You've got... You're the card. You're the Cubs fan. Your son's the Cardinals yep. fan. So you realize, yep. like later on, the like distance, despite when, you, when he's a grown man, this is this, this might not work out very well for you guys, especially during the holidays. Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you what: the thing that everybody in this house has in common is we love sports. So, so you know, you're a baseball tr- traditionalist, and I am too, and so is Luke. Luke's a Luke's a baseball guy already at ten. So that you know, we kind of put aside. The rivalry because we both love the game, and that you know that that's a great thing. I love it that he loves baseball that much, and then you know his older brother is a Cubs fan, and uh, so yeah, it's a house divided. And Chiefs fan, so it, it's a house divided. We had a good time. We had nothing, nothing got broken or anything on Sunday, so it was good. I think uh, the Cowboys fans took their lumps, and they're uh, still hopeful to go to the Super Bowl. So we'll we'll see how that goes, but. Uh, it, it, it worked out all right. We get we get along okay. We we uh, we're all right. I just don't see how you you as a as a dignified Cubs fan could allow your son to be part of quote unquote the best fans in baseball. I just I, I don't. Well, I, I, he, he needs well, to learn I, pain. I married, Children need to I learn married, what it's like to have sports pain and, cu- and cards I, don't do I'm it. I married for a Cardinals fan. Oh, okay. You know, so I I, I mean, yeah. So I mean that that's why it's down the line. So Sheena grew up here. Worked at the at uh, Ray Winder Field, so she saw, watched when she was a kid, all the Cardinals prospects, and worked at the stadium, and so that's you know her Cardinal uh, love. And I grew up in the Midwest with the Cubs in Des Moines, you know, at the AAA club. So then we get married, and then uh, we have two children, and then uh, the oldest one, you know, is kind of aligned with me, and the youngest one, Luke's aligned with her. So that's kind of how it's gone, you know, fifty fifty, but. We, we make it work. It's fun. It was it was fun when we, when we got married. We had a lot of fun. We were on XM Radio one time talking with uh, a couple of guys, and I can't remember who the hosts were, but we talked to them about you know they were talking about people that have divided houses. So it's, it's fun. We, we we have a good time. Mm-hmm. Guys, him him bringing up uh, you know Sheena's love for the Cardinals coming through, going to see the Travelers at Ray Winder Field. It just reminds me of the what it was like when I first started working there because my first year was the first year after the end of the 35-year affiliation with the Cardinals. And here comes, you know, the grown, the born and bred Pittsburgher who despises the Cardinals <laughs> coming in here, who's sarcastic. Even at the age of 23, I was sarcastic. And uh, I was like, guess what? I got your Cardinal affiliation right here. It's not a birthright. It's an affiliation. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that for a couple of years. Anyway, let's get into football, Nate. Yeah, uh, yeah no problem. Fayetteville is carrying the Northwest Arkansas banner now in the 7A playoffs, but man... yeah. It was a <laughs> what a what a comeback for the Bulldogs, huh? Yeah. Well, there's some nervous moments for sure. I, I think you know, if you read my story on Bladen Fike, you know, it, it, going back to last year, he took a knee too early. Fayetteville loses. I mean, I think that that all comes back, you know, that the toughness that he has shown coming back from that, that 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 manifests itself in games too. You're down twenty twenty one points. Well, you spent the whole year through the ringer. I mean, you you have you have you have battled back through all this adversity. So a twenty one point deficit, not going to say you're going to laugh at it, but it's probably put in proper perspective when you've gone through what he's done. So you know he rallies the troops, and it helps when you have a guy like Isaiah Satenia, uh, thirteen catches, two forty seven, three touchdowns. He turns it on, turns on the Jets in the second half. Fight settles in. I think he's around 400 yards passing. So uh, when you have those two guys, I mean, they're the best combo in high school football, um, and probably one of the better ones in the in the mid south. I mean, I you know, I don't know how you exactly measure that, but I mean, they they're, they're good, and they showed it there in the second half. They, they got behind, gave up. Some, you know, they got in the red zone and couldn't score. 
uh, three or four times in the first half, and, and Cabot took advantage. And Cabot's a scrappy team. They went to Bentonville last year and beat them, and uh, they were not intimidated. They've got a good coach. Coach Reed is, is a veteran playoff coach and got them ready to go, and it took a Herculean effort in the second half to get it done, but they do, and live to fight another day, and now we'll have to play Conway at home, and Conway, uh, you know, they beat them in the opening uh, the opening game of the season. Manny Smith, their diminutive playmaker, didn't play a lot of that game with cramps, so see how that goes if he's there all four quarters, but uh, I, know, I know Fayetteville is happy to get past, I mean, when in the playoffs, I mean, you just win any way you can, mm. and it's not, you don't get style points, so I know they're glad to be playing, they they should be their favorite too, and now we'll see what they do against Conway. Yeah, I stayed in the seven A last week, close one with North Little Rock uh, edging out Bentonville. How did that one turn out? Um, that that the last few minutes were unbelievable. Uh, Bentonville returns a punt ninety yards for a touchdown, and then that sets up a game winning drive by Malachi Gober, the North Little Rock quarterback. Uh, you know, that, that's a guy that's been kind of up and down. I think he's done a pretty good job. You know, he replaces a guy in Cream Cotton, who is a Division One, uh, you know, recruit. And so, Gober, you know, he's had to lead him on a couple drives. And so that, that's tough when there's about two minutes, 2.30 or so left, and you know you've got to go the length of the field. And he hits the uh, receiver on a 13-yard touchdown with 11 seconds left. I mean, that perfect for them. They used the exact amount of time you should. I mean, it came out perfect to them. You know, they scored 11 seconds. Bentonville has no time to answer. So, uh, heartbreak for the Tigers. I and mean, when you get that long punt return, you think the game's probably, you know, close to over if you can just get a stop. And uh, North Little Rock is gutsy, though. And, then, you know, that's why and I was one of the only ones to have them ranked number two to start the season off. And it was because of the kids. I mean, they've been to five straight state championships, and, and they've had three different coaches. But the constant's been those those ball players, and those guys are tough, gritty, athletic dudes, and uh, they know how to get it done. And it's not easy to go three and a half hours and play in a place like Bentonville that's got the, the student section, you know, the jungle there. It's a it's a raucous place, and I no doubt when they were trying to make that that drive at the end, it was loud, and they, they were able to do it. So. Um, you know, that big, big win for them. And now uh, play Brian in a rematch to try, you know, regular season to try to get uh, to the state championship game. Nate, a uh, big one down here in the River Valley. Got uh, Parkview or Greenwood. How do you see that one shaping up? Greenwood, man, it, it's crazy how things go. Uh, you know, a month and a half ago, I mean, I had Greenwood people saying, We're, we'll barely make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be six and four. And I said, you know, where have you been for the last 25 years? You've been you've been a fan that long, or did you just jump on last year? Because they that I'm not counting them out. I mean, I know better than that. I've seen it with my own eyes for the past 20 years. So they got healthy. You know, they played Parkview in the season opener. Five starters were out, um, including Hunter Houston, the quarterback. And one by one, they all kind of came back, and then you saw this this great momentum boost. And the last game of the regular season, they play Lake Hamilton and Lake Hamilton's just come off their first loss of the year, one point loss to Benton and they shellacked them 35, nothing Greenwood wins. And I'm kind of like, okay, here we go. And then after that game, everybody said <laughs> Greenwood's the favorite to win the state championship. <laughs> and now it's kind of hard to, to argue with that. They, they play Parkview at home. Um, I think there's a still probably, a burr in their saddle from losing that first game because there was there was quite a bit of noise talk after that game. I mean, I, I, obviously, in part you can't you can't uh, blame them. I mean, they were happy about that and they and they celebrated that win. But I don't think and I don't think they did anything you know out of the ordinary. But Greenwood hates to lose and they they hate losing like that. And I I think that stuck there. They've had they they hope they could play them again. They get their wish. Haven't lost a home playoff game since fourteen. So, I mean, all the all the ingredients are right for Greenwood to win this ball game. Parkview is unbelievably talented. They've got eight guys who have Division One scholarship offers. They've got freshmen on the team that are already getting looked at. I mean, they're they are pound for pound one of the most talented teams at any level. But uh, 
hard to beat that mystique. It's kind of like you're playing against the ghost, kind of like the old Boston Garden. You know, you're playing against the ghost when you come play over at, uh, at Greenland in the playoffs. So um, I would think, uh, you know, I'd have them favored to win slightly. I, I think that all the momentum and everything is on their side now. Jeff in Fayetteville wants to know about Shiloh Christian. I know they got they got Rivercrest, and uh, yeah, he said they're they're representing four A back to back and third straight trip to Little Rock. What do you see out of Shiloh? Well, they're they're an, the interesting story about them is they've got to go to Rivercrest. I mean, they didn't have to leave Springdale last year until they went to the title game. So uh, that's that's a hard long trip, but um, I'm sure they'll they'll travel in in parts i don't know if they'll leave thursday night or do it all day friday but i know jeff conway will have a good plan on getting over there um you know rivercrest is they they played them in the state championship game last year um they they beat them um handily uh blew them out um and and this is a team that that has lost a lot of players from that team but have had a good year but i i think shiloh is is a heavy favorite in this game because uh, you know, Malvern, not not the, the best year. They didn't have the best year, but they were up on them 21-20 uh, with, uh, late in the ball game, about 249, and uh, Michael Rayner has to run 29 yards for the touchdown to seal the win. Got a good quarterback named Mike Sharp. And he, he had a 93-yard touchdown pass last week, um, but they're not on the level that Shiloh is. And I think if, if Shiloh was going to go play at CrossFit, Robinson, Arkadelphia, you know, I might be a little more nervous if I'm a Shiloh fan, but they probably wouldn't because they, they're so good. But this is, if you're going to travel five hours for a road game, playoff game, this is an opponent you want to play because I, I don't think they have near the horses to, to and they're the Colts. Uh, they, they don't have the horses to keep up with, with, uh, with Shiloh, but it is really interesting that you've got to go all the way across. Caden Henley, uh, eight tackles. He's a Razorback commit. He leads a great defense. Shut out against Ashdown and Shamar Easter, the Arkansas tight end commit. Really, I mean, five turnovers. Ashdown is very explosive. Beat them twenty-one nothing, and uh, that just shows you how good their defense is. Hey Nate, a happy Thanksgiving. We appreciate you joining us. Enjoy the football, and not too far off from uh, from some championship games. It's Thanksgiving, and we all know what that means. Football. And nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting. Bet Online has you covered for all the holiday season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action this Thanksgiving. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with the promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. That's B L E A V to receive your bonus. And it's not not just football. BetOnline has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all these amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports.